Hello, I'm Pastor Ron C. Hill of the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship, inviting you to come and worship with us. We are one of the children's church. We have a lot of prayer. Prayer is going on all the time, and we're blessing God and worshiping God. Great music, great praise. But the most important thing is, is the gospel is being preached. The Holy Ghost is moving, and the lives of people are being changed and blessed. And you can be added to that number. Come expecting to hear from God. He loves you, and he has a blessing with your name on it. Now, Osi, tell them how they can get you. We're one block off the 91 freeway, and we would love to have you come and be a part. That's 1840 South Wilmington in the city of Compton. Please come. You won't be disappointed. And we love you, and we're praying just for you. shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace in the name of jesus oh and we thank him we praise you for it. we glorify your name your word has told us if we humble ourselves and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways only then will we hear from heaven you will forgive our sins, and you will heal our land in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we thank you, and we praise you for it, Father. We glorify and magnify your name. Help us to walk, Father God, in the forgiving, loving heart. We know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord do man live in Jesus' name. Oh, and we thank you and we praise you for it. We glorify and magnify and exalt the name of Jesus. Worthy is a lamb of God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you and we praise you, Heavenly Father. We glorify you, Lord. We worship and adore you, Lord God. You are worthy of all the glory, the praise, and the honor. There is no God like thee in heaven above, nor on earth beneath, that is keeping your covenant and showing your loving kindness to us, your servants, as we walk before you with all of our hearts in Jesus' name. We thank you and we praise you because we are the beloved, building up ourselves on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you and we praise you for it. We glorify and magnify your name. Your word has told us, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, to let our requests be made known unto you, Father. Our request is to do the will of you that sent us, Father, and to finish your work in the name of Jesus. We know it is not your will that no soul should be lost, but that all should come into repentance in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we thank you for it, Father. Thank you for allowing us this time of prayer. Thank you, Father. Lelo Kokaria. Yerra Roko.
Good morning, loving Unity, and online, both is online this morning, and Happy New Year to everyone. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you on today, God. We thank you for a new day that we've never seen before, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you let us see the last day of this year. We thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning. We thank you that you gave you strength in our body. We thank you, God, that we ain't had health in our body, God. Lord, we thank you on this morning. We glorify your name, God. We bless your name on this morning, God. And, oh, God, we pray that you save on today, God. See that man, that woman, that boy, oh, God, oh, in the name of Jesus, God. We pray that you fill with the Holy Ghost on this morning. We pray that you're knowing our pastor, God. There's a bishop, the bishop, Bitch, you're here, oh God. In the name of Jesus, send a word, oh God, to lift up your people, God. To bless your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we cast the devil out in the name of Jesus. Say that the Lord rebuke you. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. And we cast you out in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you heal the sick, God. Heal every pain. Heal every disease. 
peace in the name of Jesus. Comfort and encourage your people on today. Bless your people that as we praise you and glorify your name. And we'll keep it to give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and man. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our scripture this morning is in Ephesians 21 to 30. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put in a way lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corruption communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And, gra and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. May the Lord have blessed to the reading of his word. And they went out and, 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 and the praise is, uh, is, is, uh, Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the last day, hallelujah, of the year. And we've come to magnify the name of the Lord. We've come to thank him. Has God been good to anybody out there? Has God made a way for anybody this year? Has he brought you out? Oh! 
Can everyone please be seated for testimony? Hello, Bishop Hill. I'm so thankful that I can send you this note along with the donation. God has brought me from prisons and homeless shelters to become a productive mom and homeowner. It has not been easy, but it is better than trying to live without having God in your life. Thank you, Bishop Hill, for your powerful teachings on faith and how to live a holy and productive life. We went over there on Imperial and Avalon because I was praying. I was quiet this morning. And um, I heard the Spirit say, Imperial and Avalon. And so as I got out the car on, uh, in the 7-Eleven parking lot, the Holy Ghost set my eyes on two brothers that was talking. Then there was another brother that was talking. Pulled up on him. So I uh, gave him the plan of salvation. One told me he was a backslider because I asked him, I said, if you die right now, where would you go? And he said that he was going to hell. I said, let's change that. So he accepted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And, and uh, so then uh, the Holy Ghost began to deal with me. I started getting a little preachy. So I went over there in the corner and I started preaching a little bit. And so then God started bringing the souls right there. I stopped. I went, I went a couple of them to the Lord or whatnot as the Holy Ghost moved on me or whatnot. So then I said, well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I was still on fire. I said, praise the Lord. I still still some fire here. So uh, we was putting up the, the equipment or whatnot in the car. Yeah, that day, that I both see. But the Holy Ghost set my eyes on the Metro uh, employees. There was two Metro employees going in, in the 7-Eleven. And so I talked to the first uh, Metro employee, and then she was talking about that she knew Christ and whatnot. And so I said, okay, praise the Lord. But then their co, co, the co-worker, that brother, Brother Lutz, I asked him, did he know Christ? And he said he didn't know Christ, but he said that he wanted to go to heaven. So I gave him a plan of salvation, and trust me, that brother walked away, and he said, man, thank you for that prayer. I surely needed that. Thank you, Bishop Hill. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, and thank God for the power of ministry, because truth is ministry in this church is alive. Amen. Would you rest on your feet this morning in the sanctuary? I have the privilege this morning to introduce our bishop. Hallelujah. He's a man of great integrity. He's a man in 1972 answered the call to ministry. He's a faithful man. He's a man that understands that holiness is still right. And um, on behalf of the congregation, we just want to say, we thank you, Bishop. We thank you for, for praying for us, for loving us. And most importantly, you didn't treat us how we sometimes treat you. Amen. He's a man who put up his own home for the advancement of this ministry. Some of us, if the Raiders are playing, we're not even coming to church that night. Amen. So why are you saying that, Nelson? I'm saying that because our teachers, the one who, uh, they stand in the stead for us. The Bible says they deserve to be honored. Amen. And so we're going to clap our hands for him. We're going to show him that we love him this morning because he's been faithful. He's a unique man. Count yourself blessed this morning that he's your bishop, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Help me receive Bishop Ron C. Hill. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord, for the Lord Jesus. Give God the praise. Give him all the praise and the glory and the honor that is to his name. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Father, we are so glad to be gathered once again in this sacred place. And we're gathered for the purpose of glorifying you and for the purpose of hearing from you and 
for the purpose of fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for the last day of 23. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Many who started out with us in 23 are no longer with us, but they're not lost. We know where they are. And one of these days, we're going to have our last year. And one of these days, we're going to exit our body. And we look forward to seeing you in peace on the other side. But while we're down here, we are committed by faith to obey you, by faith to walk in the Holy Ghost, by faith to promote Christ's gospel by faith to seek your will for our lives. Now, Lord, I pray for everybody who's here and under the sound of my voice, here present or uh, viewing my stream today, that you grace us to see in the Spirit that everything we need is wrapped up in holiness. Hallelujah. Draw this church into holiness and into walking in your love. We believe in you to heal the brokenhearted and uh, heal the wounded spirit and set the captive free. We believe you to heal the sick body and the soul by faith. We believe it for those who need finances, that you give them a financial miracle. Those who have having domestic problems, problems in their family, heal broken families. Thy kingdom come to us. Thy will be done in us. In the name of Jesus. Now come on, give God praise for it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Magnify him. Come on, somebody. Say praise the Lord. Come on and say praise the Lord. If you're going through a test, you ought to praise God louder than anybody. If the devil is after you, you ought to be shouting praise God louder than anybody let that devil know you're not going to take my praise let that devil know he's not going to depress you praise him anyhow whether you feel like it or not give God praise <laughs> glory to God I said whether you feel like it or not give God praise he deserves all the praise he deserves all the glory. No matter what you're going through, it's not what you're going through, it's what you're going to. Things are going to get better. Praise God for it right now. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Somebody say, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Before you sit down, give three people a fist bump and tell them, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And thank and praise God for each of you who are here today, the last uh, Sunday of the year. And thank God you made it this far. Amen. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, that somebody on this planet will not see 24. Somebody will not see 24, but that's all right. As long as they know who, that, that Christ is in their heart, it really doesn't matter. Amen. Some of them say, I don't fear death. Come on. Amen. So God bless your sweetheart. Um, I want to encourage you, as I did on last week, to put on your calendar January 10, 11, and 12. We're going to have a first of the year conference and this meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, is designed to build up our faith. Great speakers are coming, great music, fellowship with saints. We have people coming from Northern California. And we don't want our Northern California brothers to come down here to fellowship with us. And we're sitting at home. Turn your neighbor and say, that's not good. Amen. So I'm asking all of you, please support this upcoming conference January 10, 11, and 12. On that Friday, I believe it is, we'll give you more information before the time. There, there will be a day session as well. 
But I can assure you that you're going to get a word that's going to bless your life. It's going to build you up and help get you started out right, <clears throat> excuse me, in the year 2024. Say amen to that. Turn your neighbors and I pray that you will make it here. In the name of Jesus. So we praise God for that. Read your Bible fast and pray. This week we're going to start the year off in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Help me say the book of Proverbs. That is the wisdom book. That is the book that will assist you in dealing with life's issues. And you will discover from uh, reading Proverbs that life issues has a lot to do with relating correctly with God and relating correctly with yourself and with other people. If you learn how to relate to God and yourself and other people, no matter what comes on your life, you're going to come out more than a conqueror by faith in Jesus' name. So get on that reading on tomorrow and, and um, set your days where you can finish the book of Proverbs this upcoming week. I noticed that there's been somewhat a drop-off in our 5 a.m. prayer meetings. Uh, several months ago, some of you started out very well. And um, that's, that's the case in prayer. When people start praying, they, they just take off. But I found out that in your prayer life, you need a set of pace that you can keep. Because it's easy to start, but it's a challenge to finish. Like some people made New Year's, New Year's resolution for 23. How long did it last? Turn to your neighbor and say, not long. So set your course. Uh, make prayer one of the most important things that you do as a Christian. In fact, it is, beloved. It's, it's one of the most important things that you do. You take that time to communicate with God and to be able to uh, reveal to God from your heart the things that you need him to do with you and for you. The Bible says that man ought always to pray and not to faint. And I love you, and I don't want you to faint. I said, I love you, and I don't want you to faint. But I can assure you that anybody who fails to pray are guaranteed to faint. And somebody will, will say, well, how do you know that to be true? Because that's what the Word says. Let's go with the Bible. And then the Bible also said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So let's not just talk about it, let's be about it. Uh, those of you who started out at 5 a.m. prayer and you, you felt falling off, get back uh, to your day. If you could come one day a week, it would bless you, it would bless your family, and it would have a positive impact on the church family. Because the Bible says my house is to be what? Called the house of prayer. And be hard, the, the, the beloved, and I tell you, it doesn't matter what you do in this life as a Christian. If you don't win in prayer, you are a loser. Somebody say, I don't like that. Well, I'm sorry. I'm here to tell you the truth. I wouldn't be standing here after all these years had I not had a prayer life. On the way to church this morning, guess what my wife and I did? We prayed. Before I went to bed last night, I prayed. I prayed this morning because I don't intend to get to be an old man and pass out. Amen. Raise your right hand and say, I'm not going to faint. Amen. And turn your knees and say, you got to pray then. You got to pray then. You got to pray. You got to pray. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me thank God for all of the tithers and offering givers. Um, sometimes we don't thank you enough for the sacrifices that you make. Um, if it were not for you tithers and offering givers, we could not operate such a expensive ministry. It costs a lot of money to operate this ministry. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even want to see the, the utility bill. 
eight, nine, and ten thousand dollars, sometimes even more, just for utilities. So it costs a lot of money to to pay salaries and retirements and insurance and this, that, and other. And plus, we are actively uh, in, in, engaged in assisting other ministries. We have found out that when you bless other ministry, particularly ministries, and, and I, I'm very, I'm a stickler about this, are they doing anything to promote Christ's gospel, first of all? And secondly, are they helping the poor? And are they taking care of the widows? When you put money in those kinds of ministries, you get a great return. <laughs> I was in the elevator. At, I went upstairs to feed my fish today, and I was in the elevator. I started laughing at my wife. You know, sometimes I can have a amount that I want to give, and I'll say to my wife, give such a, give somebody something to some, uh, to some cause. And she always give more than I give. And I think, whoa, sister. I, I call myself liberal, but my wife is a giver. In fact, in fact, sometimes the post office had to send a truck out to our house. All the envelopes we're getting from people she sent money to. I told her, oh, so you send these people the money, they sell your name to other people, then everybody's going to come after you for money. Amen. I think she's found it out. But how many know that you give it shall be given to you? How? You get measured, pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give into your bosom. So I want to urge you to be liberal. It is impossible to beat God giving. I pray that as you go out of this year, let your last offering be a reflection of your liberal heart in 24. I think somebody can give themselves into wealth in 24. I believe that somebody can increase their offerings and watch God work in their lives. I'm going to increase my offerings and, and then I want to increase, listen, listen, I want to increase the time that I spend with God um, in ministry. Um, I, 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 this is not self-serving, but I, I thought I should read this. And maybe it is self-serving, I don't know, but I, I, I got blessed by it. And I thought that since you are, since you are a financial supporter of the ministry that, that's on radio, television, the internet, and of course, door-to-door -door ministry. I thought you may, may like to hear this. It says, Pastor Hill, I just wanted to thank you. This is from a, from a guy named Steve. I don't know where he's from, but he says, Pastor Hill, I just want to thank you for who you are and what you do. You speak the truth. And this is why I watch you every morning. Your story is remarkable, to say the least. Thank you, sir, for your service to this country. After your service, you had to navigate your way through the minefield in your own country. And that is the truth. It's obvious to me God had his hand on you the entire time. You had divine purpose from the very beginning. I prefer a hard-hitting sermon, and you provide that daily. <laughs> I don't know what he mean by that, but uh, you have no idea just how many people benefit from your preaching and never compromising or backing down. If this world had more people like Ron C. Hill, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. Keep doing what you are called to do, Pastor Hill. Your crown is waiting for you in heaven. I have a feeling you will need a wheelbarrow <laughs> to carry it because of its size. God bless you, your wife, your ministry, and those that surround you daily, sir. Let's praise God for Brother Steve. Amen. Uh, you know something? Believe it or not, bishops 
and pastors and leaders need a word of encouragement just like everybody else. And I want Steve to know that he blessed my heart on today. Prophecy comes forward now. Those of you who will be consistent in paying your tithe and giving a liberal offering and seeking to live right, don't be a hypocrite behind the scenes. Live right because I tell you something, if you are a crook, it will come out sooner or later. The Bible says for sure your sins will find you out. The Bible says that righteousness exhorts the nation, but sin, sin is a reproach to any people. So imagine, if you will, if you would support the promotion of the gospel, if you, if you would support the gospel that is going across America daily, if you support that, then you can rest assured that if you add to that a wholesome lifestyle, live right. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, live right. Don't be jealous and don't be envious. Don't be negative. Don't be critical. Don't be a hater. <laughs> Say amen to that. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every member of this church will see in the spirit the necessity of paying tithe. I pray that they'll see in the spirit the importance of living right. I know from experience, my wife and I can testify that when you live right and pay your tithe and give offerings, God, you will do something great. And on a personal note, I want to thank you for yesterday when my wife and I were driving alone. God, you gave me so much peace. I had, oh, thank you for the peace that you put in my soul. <laughs> Somebody would say, I received peace today in Jesus' name. All right, tithers and offering, give us ten to your feet and come and plant your seed in this anointed ministry, and God is going to bless you for the same. You may come. Thank you for attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y.org, and you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're going to have a good time.
I want to, of course, I'm sure. How many know about tonight? What's, what's going to happen tonight? What, what time? Turn your knees, I'll meet you here. Amen. Not, not at the dance floor over there. We're not going to catch a flight to Vegas. We're going to party right up in here on tonight. Because ain't no party. Why? Why? All right, God bless you. The announcement's coming. sanctuary and those of you who are streaming online my name is sister angie duncan and at this time i would like to acknowledge our first time visitors so if this is your very first time joining us on a sunday morning if you can please raise your hand thank you our ushers are coming around to share something with you so don't put your hand down until you receive it keep that hand lifted up thank you we just want to welcome you on behalf of our bishop ron c hill our First Lady, O.C. Hill, and the entire Love and Unity Church family. For those of you who are streaming online, for the very first time, we welcome you as well. Now I want to acknowledge our youth ushers and greeters who are on duty today. Yes, let's praise God for them. We certainly love and appreciate them for their service. Amen. Amen. Now I would like to remind everyone that we have... 9 a.m. prayer right here in the sanctuary every Sunday morning before our worship service. And speaking of prayer, let's please keep our bereaved families lifted up in prayer. During our personal prayer times, let's just pray that the love and peace of God comforts their heart during this time of need. For those participants who serve in the 24-hour prayer chain ministry, we thank you for your service. And just remember how much your prayer hour benefits the lives of so many others. Also, I want to thank you on behalf of the ministry for your financial support of our media outreach beyond the four walls of this church. Your financial contribution supports our TV program, which is Food for Your Soul with Bishop Ron C. Hill. This program airs on the Impact Network Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. It also airs on the Word Network on Fridays only at 12.30 p.m. We also have two radio broadcasts. One airs on Saturday mornings on KKLA at 11 a.m. And the other airs on Sunday mornings on KJLH at 7.30 a.m. And as the bishop mentioned, we'll be in the book of Proverbs this week. And tonight, he also mentioned that we do have our watch night service. It is a crossover and concert event, so you'll get to hear music from the choir and band. Also, the preach word, I'm sorry, preach word of God will go forth, so you definitely do not want to miss it. I also want to highlight an upcoming event for this week, Wednesday, January 3rd. There will be a men's prayer and continental breakfast at 6 a.m. with our very own bishop in the chapel. So men, please come out and invite other men to come along with you, men young and old. And now it is the last Sunday of the month. So if you're like myself, you celebrate your birthday in the month of December, please stand all over the room. New Year's to you all. Now turn your attention to the video announcements on the screen. Thank you. Join us tonight at 10 p.m. for our concert and crossover service featuring music from our music department and special guest pastor Norman Hutchins and a special word for our pastor Bishop Ronald C. Hill. As we bring in the new year, praising and thanking God for all he has done. 
Do you want to be a part of our live group drives? Please go to the church's website or look for your weekly newsletter to sign up and to get more information. In honor of New Year's, the church office will be closed Tuesday, January 2nd to Friday, January the 5th. All prayer and Bible study will continue as scheduled. Calling all men you are invited to a free prayer and continental breakfast with Bishop Hill. Wednesday, January 3rd at 6 a.m. Bring your boys, teens, sons, grandsons, nephews, and brothers. Come out Wednesday, January 3rd at 6 a.m. We will be doing a 21-day consecration prayer and fasting. January 10th to the 31st. For more information, go to the church's website or call the church office. Baby dedications will take place Sunday, January the 14th during the 10 a.m. service. All applications must be submitted by Wednesday, January the 10th. Applications are located in the North Lobby. Please give your completed application to an usher or place it in the offering basket during offering time. Hello, this is Bishop Matthew Brown. I'm the prelate of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I want to extend a warm greeting to you. I am thrilled to share some exciting news with you. I'm honored to be joining forces with Bishop Robert Bob Jackson, the esteemed prelate of the California West Coast jurisdiction and their upcoming 2024 workers meeting themed, we've got work to do, January 10th through January 12th of 2024. Mark your calendars for Wednesday, January 10th, as I will be ministering both on pragmatic and strategic and ministerial ways to advance the cause of Christ so that we can gather and get our work done. Our gathering will be hosted at the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship, Church of God in Christ, where the dynamic Bishop Ronald C. Hill, Sr. serves as pastor. Join us at 1840 South Wilmington Avenue in the vibrant city of Compton, California. The theme, We've Got Work to Do, it resonates because the urgency and purposes we all share in our spiritual journeys. It's a call to action. It's a rallying cry for collective growth and impact. And I invite you to be a part of this transformative experience. Let's come together. Let's share wisdom and inspire one another to make a meaningful difference in our communities. Together, we've got work to do, and I can't wait to see you there. Again, this is Bishop Matthew Brown. I'm looking forward to an incredible time of fellowship and purpose. See you on January 10th at the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship, Church of God in Christ in Compton, California. Remember, stay in his face and journey well. Join us at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday in the chapel for one hour of prayer. I am a witness. It is changing lives. Listen to Bishop Hill and the Food for Your Soul radio program every Saturday at 11 a.m. on KKLA 99.5 in your car, on your phone, or any computer or digital devices. Join Bishop Hill and the Food for Your Soul program every Sunday morning at 7.30 in the morning on 102.3 KJLA. If you need an afternoon pick-me-up at 12.30 in the afternoon on YouTube, Facebook, and loveandunity.org. Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. for Bible study. Join us every Friday at 9 a.m. in person or online for an hour of power prayer. The teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ will never stop here at Love and Unity. We'd like to thank you for your attention with these announcements. For more information, go to www.loveandunity.org or download Ministry One app on your Android or in the Apple Store. You can also get these announcements and more on our weekly newsletter that comes to you on Fridays. If you are not receiving the newsletter, please contact the church office. Thank you so much for your attention and support. Now, let's welcome the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship Music Ministry.
Thank God for Sister Angela Anderson. Let's praise God for her. All my life. Now, God, we love you. And God, we are keenly aware of the fact that without you, we are nothing. If you take your spirit from us, we'd crumple and die. It has been your grace, your mercy your forgiveness, your long-suffering that has brought us thus far. And it is our grandest desire to live our lives in such a fashion that it would glorify you to live our lives in such a fashion that you can use us to be a blessing to somebody else. And then when our days are over down here, we want to hear you tell us, well done, in Jesus' name. So anoint my mind today to teach, to preach, and to reach your people by faith in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Now, we're going to do things a little, just a little different today. I want him to put on the screen for me uh, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Before we do anything else, I want Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. So remain standing if you don't mind for a while. Uh, read, everybody. Verse 10. Now, if you're in here today or you're under the sound of my voice by stream, and you know that you need to be saved, and you want to be saved, you don't want to die and burn in hell. May I tell you today, false prophets may try to make you think that everybody's going to heaven. That's a lie. The Bible says you must be born again. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary and that he came to the earth and proved that he was God. And then he died on the cross and the Bible said he arose from the dead on the third day. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. And the Bible says he went back to heaven. Now, somebody say, well, how did I become a sinner? I'm glad you asked. You became a sinner, dear brother, dear sister, because of what Adam did. Adam and Eve were in a perfect, pristine environment. They were in a perfect area, 
and they allowed Satan, Lucifer, the devil, to deceive them into disobeying God. Now, it was not an apple that they ate. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They partook of that tree, and it caused everybody to be a born sinner. You don't become a sinner by sinning. You sin because you're a sinner. Say amen to that. And you cannot get out of it except you be born again. And you can only be born again by repenting of your sins and accepting Christ as your Savior, getting born again, and then being taught how to walk out whom God has made you. Number two, there are people here today and maybe viewing my stream, stream today uh, know that you are a Christian, but you made a mistake last week. You did something that you know that you had no business doing. Well, I got hope for you too. Put on the screen 1 John 1, 9. We're going to let you get a bath too. 1 John 1, 9. Read everybody. Amen. If you did wrong, just admit it. Don't carry that filth around. Sin is heavy. And I used to wonder why I felt so fat when I was a sinner. I was a skinny guy, but I felt fat. Always mad about something. Mad and felt nasty. Because I was nasty. But thank God that the blood of Jesus cleaned me up. What about you, amen? <laughs> ah. So, uh, we're going to, we don't you sinners to go through the whole service as a sinner. We want everybody to raise both of your hands. Everybody. Raise both of your hands and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, know I know that I was a born sinner. I born sinner. But, I believe, but I do believe Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ he, is he is the Son of God. The Son of God. And I believe, and I believe he, suffered he suffered and bled and, bled and, died, and died on the cross for my sins and I believe he arose from the dead on the third day I now repent of all of my sins please forgive me for being a sinner I open my heart and I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my Savior please save me Jesus and make me the person that you want me to be. Now go on and clap your hands and say praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. And turn to your neighbor and say, we saved now. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we saved now. Praise God. So why wait till the end? You don't take care of that right now. Amen. You're sitting in there as a sinner all day. Just get that off of you right now. Turn your knees. I'm, I'm forgiven. Say, I'm forgiven. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> I, I did a portion of this the other day, and I want to do this again because um, it's, it's going to tie in to what I feel like God wants me to say to you today. Um, there's a lot going on in the church community. You've heard all the rumors, and, and most of you have heard the rumors about different preachers and whatever, and we're not going to dignify it by calling anybody's name, but you know who they are. Well, I guarantee you that um, God knows the truth, and he knows all the details. I've been praying, God... I pray in Jesus' name that, that you would expose all no good preachers. And, and deacons, too. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. In, in other words, it's, 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 it's my conviction that if a guy doesn't want to go to heaven, well, go in the world and go to hell first class. Don't whore around in the church. 
if you're going to go to hell, you need to smoke all the dope you can, and have all the sex you can, and do everything you can. But don't come into the church and use the church folks for that right there. Say amen to that. So uh, there are major issues, uh, particularly in America today. And I'm mighty afraid that oftentimes church people go around uh, like the peacock. You know, as if, you know, we, as if we don't know what's going on. But we are surrounded by filth uh, in this country. This country is in a sad state of affairs when it comes to morality. And there are those in and outside the church who believe that they can violate the principles of God without retribution. That they can violate the principles of God without anything happening to them. But I want you to know today that the wages of sin is death. And I'd further tell you that all of this depression and, and mental illness and all of the anger and, and, and rancor that is in America today, the incubator for it is sin. The violence and the murder and the rapes and breakdown of the families, the, the source of all of that mess is sin. And false prophets in America have tried to make it be about something else. You got a major preacher in America who said he don't say anything about sin, period. Well, he's of the devil. Anybody who doesn't warn you about what sin does is of the devil. Say amen to that. So, um, so we, 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 we're surrounded with problems, and, but they're not insurmountable. God has given us everything we need to conquer the only thing that can kill us. But again, false prophets want it to be about how much money you got and, and, and God's going to bless you with a house and uh, getting a $1,000 line, you're going to get married by Wednesday and, and all that business. <laughs> And, and people fall for that foolishness, you see. But we better open my eyes to what's going on. And you better understand the brevity of life. Yeah, you got that black hair now, but keep on living. It ain't going to stay black. It may look black after you die it, but it still ain't black. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so life is brief, my brother and my sister. And you need to know that you're not living this life to try to have fun. You're not living this life to enjoy your, 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 your sexual desires. You're not in this life to try to eat your way to victory. You're not in this life just to get rich and famous and think that that is it. If being rich and famous was the key to the good life, why are all of those Hollywood people getting divorces? Every time you turn around, they have big old wedding, they spend $5 million on a wedding, and it doesn't even last five weeks. That's a million dollars a week, bro. Why? Because they're in deception. A lot of your actors and entertainers and athletes and people who's making large sums of money in this country and who don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, they're living a miserable life. Don't let them have you thinking they got it going on. They can smile in front of the cameras all they want to, but I got a book on them. And this book right here says the wages of sin is death. And you don't want to know how some of these people are living in private. You don't want to know the people that we follow around and scream for. The actors and the entertainers and athletes, we just... Scream for them because they ran a touchdown or because they hit the shot or because they hit the high note. <laughs> I want you to know that today's star is tomorrow's has been. <laughs> Say amen. Say amen. So I want to encourage you to keep your feet on the ground. Get yourself ready for getting out of here. They don't have no pill to keep you young. And they don't have no pill to prevent you from dying. Since I got two of the amen, I'm going to preach that again. 
There's no pill to keep you young, and there's no pill to prevent you from dying. So you, you really should be focused on getting ready to die more than anything else. More than anything else, you ought to be living your life so that you can hear God tell you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And stop letting people always dinger before you. You're going to get rich. You're going to get famous. You're going to get a good job. Well, God's got this for you. Don't fall for that. Let me tell you how to get everything you need. I'm going to give you a one-shot deal. Here it is. Here it is. But seek ye first. the kingdom of God and all these things. How many? All. all these things shall be added unto you. And false prophets got you running behind them. And, oh, they're going to give you something. Oh, do you have a word for me? Because years ago, the people used to run behind me. Oh, hey, Pastor, you got a word for me? I said, yeah, I do. What, what, is, what is it? Six or six books. <laughs> oh, you ain't know nothing. No. Stop thinking about have. Stop looking for people always giving you a prophecy. Yeah. Prophesy to yourself. Yeah. Says, self, we're going to live right. Yeah. Self, we're going to stop eating up everything. Yeah. Self, amen, amen. Self, we're going to tell the truth. Yeah. Self, we're going to do right. Yeah. Amen. Talk to yourself, amen. So I, I, want, I want you to go out of this year, not I, but God wants you to go out of this year understanding that uh, one of these days is going to be your last year and uh, you got to leave here and I want you to be ready. My wife and I pray all the time and first thing we pray for, you know when my wife and I pray together, the first thing we pray for when, when I lead the prayer, now, she leads the prayer, she pray, you know, she got her own way, but I, when I lead the prayer, the first thing I pray for is that God would bless our marriage to stay together. And, and somebody said, well, y'all been married all? I don't take anything for granted. I ask God, Father, bless me to be the kind of husband that my wife needs. And bless her to be the kind of wife that I need. Don't let the devil tear our marriage up. Amen. Because I don't, I don't take this for granted. Now, now, if she don't leave me by February the, the, the 19th, we'll be 52 in, 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 in marriage, 52 years. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't stupid. No, no, my wife takes good care of me. So, so I, I pray for that, and then I pray, God, save my sons and my daughters. I don't, want, I don't want a son or daughter to end up burning in hell. And while I'm living, I'm praying for them daily. Convict them and don't let the devil have them. Amen. Now, you can ask the question, well, if you go to heaven, your son's not there, you're going you to start crying? No. I ain't going to feel nothing. But while I'm living, I feel obligated to pray for my family. Say amen to that. How many of you feel the same way? Say amen. So don't be in a church fooling around trying to get your blessing and you're trying to get your praise on and you stop that foolishness. Amen. God got to bless your name on and all that stuff. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And all that. Stop all that stuff. Talk about that old foolishness, people. Keep your feet on the ground. Let's do this thing the Bible way. Amen? Say amen to that. Major issues that are before the church. We're going to go through these quickly, but I need you to see them. One of the major problems we have in America today is the breakdown of the family. Too much rancor going on in the family. I was telling one of my children the other day, I said, you know, uh, it's, it's wonderful that we can get together at Christmas. Ain't nobody fighting. Ain't nobody throwing pie, pie pans and, and <laughs> talking about, I remember what you did to me 15 years ago. I think uh, it, it's a wonderful thing, you know, to, to be able just to get along with your family members and to love them. And I, I would like to think if something bad happened to me, my family's going to be there to surround me. And my family know if they need me, there I am. Because I love those Negroes, amen. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Number two, number two. 
crime and violence. It's dangerous out there, folks. You got demon-possessed people out there, and all they think about is robbery, stealing and killing and taking stuff that doesn't belong to them. They're full of the devil. Let's just call it. And you notice your major preachers nowadays with the big microphones, they never talk about the casting out of demons. They never talk about that. But the Bible says, in my name, you should cast out devils. You, sometimes you got a demon that's trying to drive you out of your mind who will tell you, go shoot him. And then after you shoot him, you say, I don't know why I did that. I know the devil told you to do it. Number three, number three. Our school and education system is in a, in a bad fix. Some of these teachers are just as nutty as a fruitcake. <laughs> just as crazy putting all kind of stuff in your kids. And your kid come back acting funny. You just say, what's wrong, what's wrong with my kid because uh, of the school system? Number four, race relations. The devil is using skin color to make some people think they're better than you because of their skin color. Now, you're talking about a dummy. You, now, you, you're talking about a dummy to think that because somebody's skin color is darker or lighter than yours that make them better. If you ain't some boy, you better be good. I'm saying, because somebody need to cuss you out. Amen to God. How in the world are you gonna sit around and think the, the color of your skin is make you superior or inferior? That's all I'm gonna say about that. Verse number, number five: sexual perversion. This same sex marriage stuff. Talking about the the former president talking about. Well, well, a person ought to be able to marry who they love. Ain't no love. How two big old fat men talking about they love each other? You nasty thing. Love. Ain't no love. Man got the right to, to marry who he loved. It, people, folks have gone out of their minds. The pedophilia, you got, you got men in this country right now who's trying to get laws passed where they can marry a child. Because they love children. You went with, with kids? Don't let, every, don't let your kids go spend the night everywhere and with everybody. <laughs> don't do that. Now, when my kids were young, they used to get mad at me. Well, it's going to be a, 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 a pajama, pajama party. I, yeah, I know all about that. You go get in the bed over there. You know? Daddy, you just, you just so hard. You don't let, this is a prison. I, I be glad I get out of this prison. This is a prison. I was trying to keep from going to prison. Amen. Because has somebody molested one of my children? I'd, I'd have had a jail ministry. And I didn't need that. I didn't need that. And this country, on all levels, even you got preachers, who are trying to, trying to put this homosexuality stuff down our throat and make us scared to say anything. You tell them I'm selling whoop tickets over here and I'm talking about it. It's a sin. God burned up a whole city. Men came into town, they come knocking on the door, talking about where did men at? The man said, I got some daughters in there. I don't want them girls. I want them men. And we're going to grab him. God had struck them boogies with blindness to keep him from raping that man. Oh, God. Hey, brother, don't go to prison. Don't go to prison because it's dangerous in there. Number six, abortion on demand. Now I'm going to make a statement. I know this is touchy. This is a touchy subject. But I'm going to tell you some people, when you get pregnant, that's a child. Don't let them people tell you it's not a child. It is a child. And for them to pass laws in this country and to say that it's okay to murder an innocent baby, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's barbaric. Barbaric. And you know it started for black people. Margaret Singer 
came with the idea of abortion because she hated black people and came to the black preachers and they agreed with her to kill black babies. Now, the Black Lives Matter people, I wonder why they don't concern themselves with black babies. A bunch of them. Well, I don't want to curse. But um, I'll tell you something. There's about 41 million black people in America. 41, 42 million. Since 1973, we have aborted 41 plus million black babies. Our population could be double or triple what it is. While we're talking about the white man, it's us killing us. We're not shooting each other down on the street. We're killing babies in the abortion clinic. And don't nobody say anything about it. But that day is old. It's murder. And, and if you've done it, you need to ask God to forgive you. And he will. But you need to know it's wrong. I thank and praise God that I'd say two or three babies in this, in this church. A girl came up to me, standing right there. She came to me. She said, hey, Pastor Hill, I'm pregnant, but I'm going to get an abortion. I, I, and, and I never do this. I try to be kind to everybody. But I'm looking at her and I said, if you get an abortion, you better not show your face in here ever again. And she said, oh, I had that baby. She had that baby, praise God. I've had that happen several times. Have, if you're pregnant in here, have it. Well, he's a married man. Well, you should have known it before you laid down with him. <laughs> that baby ain't got nothing to do with who his dad is. Have that baby. And this transgender sex change business. Do you not know they have laws in the book where your daughter can go or your son can go to school and say, I feel like a boy today. Sometimes I feel like a nut. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like <laughs> Y'all forgive me for that. I, I should have said that. I don't know where that came from. But Come on back, y'all stop. Now, <clears throat> now, the government, in effect, has taken over our families. They can take your daughter, son, and take them to the hospital somewhere and, and do a sex change on them without your permission. And then they say they want it and you won't do it, they, they're trying to charge you with child abuse. Now, if that's not crazy, what is? The boy said he's a girl today, so he can go to the girl shower. Now, I'm not proud to say this, but they had it when I was a little teenage boy, I would have been a girl a couple of days, amen? <laughs> to go to the girl shower. <laughs> and some of you brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's foolishness about a boy, say he's a girl now, and he want to be on the girl basketball team. Yeah. Talking about, we won the championship, we won the championship. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Ver number seven, number seven, not virtue, number seven. Drugs and alcohol abuse is destroying many lives and families. Now, some people can't drink. Some people have a proclivity for alcoholism. The guy said, I had one drink, and after that, drink had me. <laughs> Don't fool around with alcohol. It's dangerous. The last drink you take can just grab you, and you'll be drinking every day, and you can't stop. Needless to say, drugs is killing people. The economic problem uh, in this part, hundreds and thousands of people dying on drugs. You young folks in here today, when you go buy weed, you don't know what they put in that stuff. <laughs> the best thing to do is to ask God to help you to stop getting high. Get high on the Holy Ghost. Get high on the Word of God. Get high on Jesus instead of trying to get high on these drugs. And please know I'm not trying to push you down because I used to get high. I was getting high because I wanted to get high. <laughs> Amen. But 
I thank you, praise God, I got delivered again. Because, you know, <laughs> help me, Holy Ghost. The, 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 the thing about it is, it was easier for me to start smoking weed than it was cigarettes. I just cut the weed. When I got saved, I flushed my weed. And I had some Acapulco gold or some good stuff I had, amen. <laughs> you, you don't just flush that stuff except you serious. You say, I knew I was saved. When I, when I flushed Acapulco gold, I, I'm saved. <laughs> but those cigarettes had a hold on me. I had to really pray that God helped me, and he did, he did. Alcohol abuse was never a thing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like whiskey. If whiskey tastes bad, it burns you. I don't need that. I don't need all that. No, no, no. Number eight. Number eight. Immigration, immigrants coming across our borders. What do you think about that? I'm not asking you to answer. What do you think about that? Hundreds and thousands of people coming across the border every week and every month. In Chicago, this black lady was at the city council meeting, and she was irate. She said, you're spending $40 million a month on the immigrants, and we've been trying to get some help for black folk for years, and you won't do nothing for us. I said, I feel you, sister. But we don't know. But you, you can rest assured, allowing these immigrants to come into this country, it has something to do with money. It's got something to do with money. But the United States of America better hear me well. Judgment's going to come from God on this country. You better hear me today. And just because you're a Christian, that means you're not going to be dealing with it. So I suggest to you as a Christian, get real with God. Don't play no games with God. You're going to need to be so full of the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost said, don't go down Adam today, go down Broadway. It's going, it's going to be that tight. Don't, 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 don't eat at this restaurant, eat at the other one. Because that restaurant, everybody's going to fall dead after somebody parts and everybody in there. That's coming. A lot of these people coming in, they're going to start putting stuff in people's food and they're going to drop dead inside or just outside the restaurants. It's coming. So we need to get ourselves together as a people of God so that we can have an impact on this country. Say amen. amen. Number nine, number nine, poverty and homelessness. And a lot of that has to do with crooked business people who don't want to pay people what they should pay them. Why should the corporation make $20 million every, every quarter when they can make $10 million and that's still enough? and share that wealth with your workers. But greedy corporations, all they're thinking about is money, 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 and now they're coming out with, 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 with AI where, where, where they're gonna be putting a lot of people out of work. Out of work. Machine selling you, giving you your, your, your hamburger. Did you want this hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I said hot dog. You just... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, and I don't like the way that lady talks to me in my car sometimes. You forgot your phone. It ain't none of your business if I forgot my phone. Let me tell you about my phone. The car's talking to you now. Number 10. A lack of holiness and love in the church. That's what we need. We need a church that's operating in holiness and in love so that we can address the, the deplorable conditions that are existing in our nation. Eleven. Read everybody. We need the release of the power of the Holy Ghost in this, in this church and in the church everywhere. But it can't happen when people have in the world and half in the church. You got to be all in this. Turn your neighbor and say, it's all or nothing. Number 12, war in Ukraine and Russia. Putin 
started the war and now blaming the Ukraine people for, for attacking him. I think Putin has the devil in him. I think Putin is demonized. The devil is using him. And someday Russia is going to attack Israel and God's going to clean their clock. They're going to find out who God is when they do that. Number 13, war between Israel and the Palestinians. I mean, you can say what you want to say, but Israel wasn't bothering those people. That they were at a concert, and they come and kill all those people and raping all those women. That's evil. I also think it's evil to kill all those innocent Palestinians. That's evil. But I'm going to tell us right now, I'm on Israel's side. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible said these words, if you bless Israel, God's going to bless you. You curse Israel, God's going to curse you. I ain't trying to get no curse on me about them Jews over there, amen. I'm good, I'm good, amen. Raise your right hand, everybody say, God bless the Jews in Israel and across the nations of the world because they're your chosen people in Jesus' name. And I want you black folks to notice some of y'all Jews. There are Jews in Ethiopia just as black as a thousand midnight. And I'm certain that there are some black Jews right here in this country. I hope I'm one of them, amen. <laughs> 14. Mental illness and suicide. Have you ever seen so many people? When, when I was a kid, black folk didn't kill themselves. They kill you, but they wouldn't kill themselves. But now here we are um, doing what everybody else is doing, killing ourselves. And one of the major problems is mental illness. There's a, there's a, there's a mental illness. Sometimes a person's brain is sick. And this bipolar business, where you're happy Monday, mad Saturday, and on, on Tuesday you're dancing, but then the next day they can't find you. It's bipolar stuff. Some people are tripolar. Uh, okay, what kind of bad he gonna come out of here? And some mental illness is chemically uh, induced. I mean, I worked on Skid Row for a number of years and counseled hundreds and hundreds of Skid Row people, and some of them were just mental cases. You know, some of them just mental cases, and you had to watch them because some of them were, they were very ticky. Certain guys, I couldn't say too much to them. They want to fight. A bit mentally ill. So we were surrounded by it. 15, 15. I'm about sickness and disease. I don't need to tell you about that. And you need to know that more diseases are going to break out in America. The Bible talks about pestilence and war, earthquakes. And by the way, get your tie all your stuff down in your home because we are due for an earthquake right here in Southern California. And then all this sickness and all this disease. Folks, walk with God and ask God to keep you healthy in your body. <laughs> it's no fun being sick. I've been sick. I was telling my wife the other day, one week I had three surgeries in one week. Y'all didn't know anything about it. I wonder who was telling y'all all about that. And, and it's, you know, and I'm... <laughs> I made a joke out of it. I said, okay, y'all, we gonna get high again today? They said, yes, sir, come on. Because <laughs> I later that gas hit me, I'm gone, brother. Wake up in recovery. Three surgeries in one week because of sickness and because of disease. The Bible teaches us that Jesus was wounded for our transgression. And, and, and by his stripes, the Bible says we're healed. I urge you to get you a strong prayer life. I stand here. I beg you, read your Bible. I beg you to pray. I beg you to fast. And some of y'all just, eh, stop that. God is sending this word in it to you for you to get fortified and equipped for what's down the road. You don't know what's down the road. You know where you've been, but you don't know where you're going. You know what you have faith, but you don't know what you're going to face. So get ready for it.
This is not, this is not play. We're not here to try to preach one another, not seeing each other. We're trying to get ready for our future. I don't plan to backslide because of something going on in this earth. But if you don't get ready for it, you, if you don't get ready, when, when the storm comes, you won't be able to stand. You got to get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Read and study and memorize and meditate in the word of God. Give yourself to prayer, prayer and fasting. And when you know you're wrong, repent and change. Because there's a hell to shun out there. 16. Fear, anger, and hopelessness. That's one of the main problems that we suffer with in the inner city. People who are full of fear. And when you get enough fear in you long enough, it will morph into anger. And anger will morph into violence. So you need, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And the love and of a sound mind. So I don't fear. Just help me say, out and fear. Fear's got to go. Help me say, fear has, has to go. And then stop being angry. And I should have put another word up there: jealous. Stop being angry and jealous of other people. It's it's okay to come in third in a three man race. It ain't nothing wrong with it. Say, well, we had a three man race. Hey, brother, how'd you come? And I came in third. I didn't say last, I said third. <laughs> Change the terminology. It isn't anything wrong with a, a people having a bigger house or a bigger car than you. It isn't anything wrong with people having, having more than you. That has nothing to do with you. Because life does not come from outside in, it comes from inside out. It's not what you have, it's what has you. You got to learn this. And I've known people that's just dead in the graveyard right now who did everything they could to get money, 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 money. And how they brag about their house, they brag about their stuff, and died. And their kids just ran through it because they had the wrong focus. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Don't love the limelight. You know, some people, oh, I want to have a big ministry and I want to be that. You better watch yourself. Because when you get a spotlight on you, do you know what else comes with that? Heat. A spotlight's going to bring heat. And can you stand the heat? And a spotlight also brings bugs. And, and the spotlight also let the devil know where you at. Yeah. You, better, you better let God, God raise me up as high as you want me to go, not one inch higher. Yeah. Because we, we're not here to impress people. We're not here to try to show how great we are. No, we're here to be obedient. Be faithful to God. And I guarantee you, anybody who obeys God, he gives peace. I alluded to this. My wife and I were driving yesterday, and I told her, I said, girl, I got this peace all down in me. I was just, it was all down out of bullshit. I'm driving around, boy, I said, oh, this peace is so good. Because I had been praying, been reading my Bible, been living right. When you read your Bible and live right, God gives you a, a peace. He'll give you a dessert. He gives him spiritual ice cream, spiritual cookies. He give you peace in your soul and joy in your soul, and and you walk around with a swag because you know that you know that you know you know that when you live right, God's gonna always supply you. When you live right, you ain't gotta worry about what somebody else is gonna say, think, and do. They ain't in charge of the world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. And God says no good things will he withhold from you if you walk up right before him. Stop being a crook. Stop being jealous. Stop being angry. Get in your lane 
stay in your lane, do what God told you to do, and watch God bless you. Clap your hands in his praise. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. 17. Here's a big problem we're having. False prophets, false prophets, false politicians, and false business people. They make life bad when people got their thumb on the scale. It makes life bad. Lying people, smiling politicians, tell, tell the people one side of town one thing, go to the other side of town, tell them a totally different story. Smile. Smiling false preachers, false politicians, and crooked business people. If you're in business, be honest. If you're a preacher, be honest. I never should forget, bought tears in my eyes the other day. I was praying about some years ago. My, my middle, the brother that I, that I was very close to, he passed on. And he called me Runt. So I, when I called him, told him, I, was, I said, Russell, I'm going to call the preacher. He said, Runt, don't play with God. And I said, don't worry about that. Because God's been too good to me. Because don't nobody know the mess I was in except me. And I'm not going to be playing with God because you know the main reason I'm not going to play with God? Two main reasons I'm not going to play with God. Number one, I love him. And number two, I don't want to burn in hell. So, so that's it. Now, you, you may say you ain't worried about that. That's your business. But this is my soul right here. This is my soul and I don't want my soul full of a lot of ghouly God. Not only are all tired of some other woman. I don't want to be tired of loving money and love that. No, 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 no. God grace me to have the right motive and the right attitude and the right spirit. And guess what? I really don't care what y'all think. Because some of y'all think I'm crazy anyway. So it don't make me, it don't make me know what y'all think. It, it, it's what God knows about me. God knows the way I take. He know what I think. He know what I say. He know what I'm doing. And I want him to know, have your way in my soul. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me with your word. And if I'm wrong, convict me. And I go on and tell him if I'm wrong and I won't hear you, tell somebody else about my mess. Put my mess in the street before it's too late. And have them to come and tell me. I'm not playing with this right here. I want the will of God to be done in my soul, my spirit, my mind, and my body. And hallelujah, whatever God gives me, I'm going to take it. If God doesn't want me to have it, I don't want it. The only thing I want is his will. I trust in his love. I trust in his power. I trust in his wisdom. I trust in his knowledge. I trust him with me. I don't trust me. I done lied to myself too many times. How many times I said I wouldn't do it and did it? How many times I said I was going to do it and didn't do it? So I don't fool with this guy. This guy here can't be trusted. And see, that's some of y'all problem. Y'all still think you, think you something. You ain't nothing, but you think you are. Always going around trying to figure stuff out. I ain't trying to figure out nothing. I want to be full of and led by Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fill me. Holy Ghost anoint me. Holy Ghost lead me. Holy Ghost guide me. Holy Ghost take me over in the name of Jesus. Not my will, thy will be done in my soul because I'm sick of me. Anybody sick of yourself? Anybody know you a mess? You better cast the devil out of your mind, plead the blood of Jesus over you, and realize you need help. You need God to help you. You need God to strengthen you. You need God to lead you. You need God to guide you in the name of Jesus. You need to say, God, have your way in my soul. Y'all said, I'm about done. I didn't know it's going to take this long. Is it helping anybody today? The last one, 18. Read, everybody. Liars and deceivers. You don't, boy, you see some online? 
And I almost did it. I saw some online. And then the guy said, no, that ain't true. I said, I just saw it online. He said, man, you can't believe everything you see online. Google a lot to you sometimes. You can't trust everything Google is saying. But it gives you facts. They are liars and deceivers. And now with this AI stuff, they can take my voice and copy my voice and have me to call Osi and tell her to send me $2,000 right quick. And that she can't detect my voice. When, when, you know, like sometimes people call, oh, yo, this grandma, I'm in jail, I need $1,500. You need to say, what was your grandmama's name? You got him in. He don't know that, see. There's so much out there, people. If God doesn't help you, you're done for. You best hear me. There are so many lies, liars, crooked people. The only thing they want is your money or your body. And some of you young women think these boys love you. Oh, he loved me. I liked it, him, and he liked it. Don't you be no fool. Amen. Keep your body for your husband. Amen. And make sure he's a man before you marry him. Amen. Amen. It's a lot of liars out there. How many of some liars out there? And when I was a little boy, they, my mama used to say, you can't look me in the eye and lie. And I couldn't because I thought she could tell. <laughs> I didn't do it, mama. Boy, you lying. Look, look at my eyes. And I thought she see right straight through me. I better tell the truth. And I grew up with that idea that people couldn't look you in the eye and lie. Was I wrong? <laughs> They'll look you in the eye and start crying. I ain't lying. <laughs> I ain't lying. Lying through their teeth. <laughs> the devil was a master liar. He's a liar. He was a liar, is a liar, will always be a liar. And a deceiver. And every just watch your own line. And people, stop showing your body online. <laughs> young ladies, young men too, you know. Why you got to tell everybody what you have for breakfast and, and, and where you going? Where you going to go shopping? Why you need to do that? Well, that's another mystery. So. All right, I got 12 minutes and I'll be done. If this helps you at all, clap your hands. Please. <laughs> now, put on the screen for me, St. Matthew 1, 21 through 23, and I'll be just about done here. Did I tell you I love you all today and I'm and I want you to go to heaven. I know people have told you to go to other places. I'm not going to tell you that. I want you to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if ye have faith, and, uh, no, excuse me, St. Matthew 1 and 21. St. Matthew chapter 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from the sin. If I was going to put a, a title to this teaching today, it would be sin is the cause of it all. Everything I just put on that screen today, sin is a cause of it all. And the Bible says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Next verse. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. Verse 23. Behold the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. God is with us. And he's with you to set you free from the only thing that can ruin your life. These false prophets got people claiming that they're saved and they're still sinning. When somebody say they saved, saved from what? If you aren't saved from sin, you're not saved. Jesus died on the cross 
to save you from sin in three areas, in three phases, I should say. Number one, he died to save you from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin, the wages of sin is death. God does not want you dying. God wants you to live. The thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And then he came to set you free from the power of sin. God does not want you running around here saying you're saved and still being controlled by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's dumb. Do you think Jesus went through all that awful death on the cross for the devil to keep on being your, your father? For your flesh to rule you? No, he didn't do it. He died. The Bible says he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And you need to know when you use your faith to claim victory over Satan and sin, you can have a good life. But, but, but God, God never intended for you to do this overnight. You know, I've been at this full time since 1973, had many wars, many successes, and some failures. But I can tell you this, that when you use your faith and you trust this gospel, and then you learn to defend yourself, dear brother and sister, you can have a great life right down here on this planet. Say amen to that. As Savior, Jesus will save his people from their sins their spiritual rebellion and offenses against God. We must never forget that sin is the greatest enemy of the human race because it separates human, humankind from God. And it is present to destroy every, every person on this planet. So every, excuse me, to, to destroy every soul on this planet. Let us consider what sin has produced in our world today, and we've already done that, we saw what sin can do. And the only people in this world who has answers for the mess America is in today would be those of us who truly know God and who are walking with him. For sure, a sinful, ungodly church fellowship. Now get this, now hear this well, hear well. For sure, a sinful, ungodly church fellowship cannot impact a sinful, ungodly world. It just can't happen. We can't be in here doing the same thing, thing that they're doing and then hope to have a, make a difference in the world. You, you can't keep doing what you used to do and then say you're walking with God. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I'm going to quickly tell you this. I don't have time to develop this. But a lot of you young Christians in here, what you don't understand is this. If you walk with God, it's going to cost you. Walking with God isn't cheap. It's going to cost you everything you got. It's going to cost you you. God's not going to allow you to enjoy the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life while you're walking with him. Because you got to come out of the world and get over into the spirit in order to do that. But in order for you to do that, you have to have faith. You got to have faith that this word is true. I thank and praise God that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that this word is true. Ah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ is Lord. He did die. He did go to the tomb. He was raised from the dead and he's coming back again. And on this planet, if you get full of the Holy Ghost and get full of the Word of God, you can stand against demonic forces. Hallelujah. You can take the devil and put the devil under your feet. You can use your faith to conquer you. Glory to God, brother. And when you take authority over Satan and self, there's nobody else to fight. Then you let other folk do whatever they want. Just do you, man. Go do you. If you don't like me, fine, do you. Because you doing you ain't going to have me doing me. So, so I'm not going to allow you, to, I'm not going to allow you to act a fool and have me to act a fool with you. No, sir. I used to do that, but not anymore. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time worrying about what you did and what you didn't do. It's none of my business. 
because in my life, and I've been trying to teach my wife this, and she, I think she about got it now, too. And I've been trying to teach y'all. I don't know if you're going to ever get this. This is so powerful right here. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. In life, you're dealing with three entities. Three. You, God, and the devil. That's it. That's it. But what if I don't? No, nope, nope, nope. That's too many people in, on your stage. On your stage, God, the devil, and you. God's on one side, the devil on the other side, and they both want you. You are very important because both the devil and God want you. And they're waiting to see who you're going to choose. They both are hitting on you daily. They're macking at you and trying to get you to come with them. And now you're going to have to make up your mind. Whose report? Oh, shut up, baby. Whose report are you going to believe? I guarantee you one thing that if you believe God, it ain't nothing the devil can do about it. In fact, he know he can't do nothing about it, and he'll get up off of you. All you got to do is keep using the word of God against him. Tell the devil what is written, and when you tell the devil what is written and you stand your ground, he'll move up off of you because it's just like if somebody, if somebody sit on a red hot stove, you ain't got to tell them to get up. They know to give it up. They'll get a message, get up, get up. And when you stand on the word of God, the devil know he's got to get up off of you because greater is he who's on the inside of you than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. But, but most people, most people, they need somebody else to make them happy. I don't need my wife to make me happy. I was happy before I got her. We share happiness. My wife not depending on me to give her happiness, and I'm not depending on her to give me happiness. My joy comes from God. This joy that I have, the world, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. So it's me, God, and the devil. God is talking to me. The devil is talking to me, and it's up to me to decide which one I'm going to believe. I don't know about you, but I believe God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose from the dead. I believe he saved from sin. I believe he's a healer. I believe he's a way maker. As a fact, I know because when I started this church, with no money and no people. Glory to God. I got off into that word, and I stood on that word, and I believed the word. I believed it in my heart. I spoke it out of my mouth. I obeyed it, and slowly but surely. See, most of y'all looking for that quick blessing. It's, it's not out there for you. God is a slow God. He takes his time. He just kind of drag along. I've been saying, God, can't you hurry up? He said, you can't hurry me. I'll get there when I get there. What you got to do, wait until I get there and praise me while you're waiting. Get on your feet, everybody. Get on your feet, everybody. Raise your hands. Raise them high. And say, God, not my will, thy will be done in my soul, my spirit, my mind, and my body. And in the name of Jesus, I cast the devil out right now. Go, devil, go in Jesus' name. Now give God a shout. Give him a shout. Somebody shout out hallelujah. Glory. Somebody shout glory. Put your hands on your neighbor's shoulder. Put your hands on your neighbor's shoulder and say, neighbor, I pray the blessing and favor of God upon you. I pray in Jesus' name that God will give you revelation and inspiration to know how to walk that word. God will always keep his word. If you keep your word, he's going to keep his word in your life. You can do this. No matter what condition your life is in, 
right now by faith you can come out more than a conqueror now come out of there in the name of Jesus give God the praise give him praise for it right now. hallelujah hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah Woo. give me three minutes three minutes we're going home remain standing please remain standing Number one, is there anybody in here today, young or old, who know that you need some discipleship help? In other words, you need somebody who will pray with you, somebody who will pray for you, and somebody who will check on you to make sure that things are going well for you. Don't try to run this life by yourself. God always send them out two by two. And sometimes you're trying to do it by yourself and you can't do it by yourself. And if you want somebody to help you, come to the altar right now. Come. You, you need somebody. You may have been saved a long time. I don't know. But you need, you need somebody to stand with you, to call you, to pray with you, to help you. Come. There are others, there are others. There are others in here who will say, Bishop Hill, I, I need somebody to pray with me. Because see, sometimes you're trying to be so secretive, you don't want nobody to know you're going through problems. We are family. Help me to say, we are family. And we want to help you. We want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We, we don't want you to be beat up by the devil. And when you're having a bad day, you want to cry on somebody's shoulder, cry on our shoulder. Because we're going to assign somebody to you. There are others, others. you in here and you said, Bishop Hill, I need somebody to help stand with me. I'm going through. Sometimes I feel so alone. Sometimes I feel that nobody care about my situation. But dear brother and sister, I'm here to tell you today that we care about your situation. We care about you. We understand that life is not always easy. And I was thinking about this the other day. I joined the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ back in the late 60s, early 70s. And there were two men, a man by the name of Forrest Lowe and a man by the name of Gerald Fortier. Fortier. And the old people told me, they said, get with those two men and hang with them. I started chasing them around. They called me, invite me to do things, invite me to Sunday school, invite me to studies and, and whatever until I was able to stand on my own. You need somebody to help you. And if you're still standing back there, you're a Christian, but you by yourself, you don't have nobody helping you, get on the altar right now, come now. Let somebody else need to come. I don't know who it is, but come. 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 I said, come. Somebody have to say, come. We're here to help you. And you cannot make it by yourself. I, I know, had I been by myself, you see, when you get by yourself, the devil tell you all kind of crazy stuff. He start telling you, nobody care about you. Nobody wants you. Now people don't like you at that church. Don't go back in there no more. They don't like you. This is here talking about you and your mama. You don't want you to come around here. But it's not true. We love you. Help me to say, everybody, we love you. Okay, is there one more? Is there one more? You believe in God, but you need somebody to roll with you. You believe in God. You know God is real, but you're tired of trying to do it by yourself. You need somebody to help you. Whoever you are, this is the last call. Come now. Everybody, everybody say, come now. come now. We get ready to see this church. This church is getting ready to change. It's getting ready to change. We're going to have more power. We're going to keep more people. More people are going to get stronger. The Holy Ghost told me to do this. He told me to do this, and I did it. And I want you folks to know we love you and you need somebody to help you. 
Do you not know that at my age right now, I got somebody that pray with me almost every day? Oh, yes, I do. And some days I got some ideas in my mind ain't worth a penny. And my bishop will say, Ron, you know that's not God. And I think, whoa, he's right. And I change. We need each other, amen? Uh, Y'all follow them, follow them, follow them. <laughs> Praise God for them, follow them. Come on, follow them. Come on, young lady, don't leave, don't leave. You got to follow them. Go with them, go with them. Go, go with them. We got you, baby, we got you. We got you, we got you. Hey, better give me, just get these folks. Now come another, now come another one. Good, 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 good. Everybody need help. Some of you say help. Yeah. Now, the last two things. I know it's been only three minutes, so I didn't add. Give me some grace time. Here we go. Number one, is there anybody here who doesn't have a church home? You don't want this to be your church home. Anybody? You like for this to be your church home? Going once. It's free today. All right, now, now I want all of you to invest in our television ministry. Sit down and write the biggest check you can. And as soon as you get it written, get ready to go. We're going we're gonna to get out of here. Did anybody enjoy the Lord today? I did. I did. And, and Ellis Nelson is going to pray the, the final prayer before we get out of here. Pray for the offering. Let God lead you today as you sow into our radio and television ministry. And while you do that, you waiting to hear the voice of God. Where are all my men? If you're a man, would you please stand for me? If you're a man. If you are a man, all my men are standing right now. Let's praise God for all these men at our church. You can do a little bit better than that. A church full of strong, obedient men. Men, this, this Wednesday is a special day. As most of you know, we have men's prayer, men's only prayer every Wednesday. This Wednesday is going to be dynamic because our very own Bishop Hill is going to join us. He's going to lead us in prayer on Wednesday. And so we're asking you, not only make sure that you're there, but bring your sons, bring your nephews, bring your uncles, your co-workers. Make the sacrifice. Some of us men, we can call that job and say, I'm going to just be a few minutes late today but I will be there. I believe Bishop's going to bless us. And why not get a great charge as we go into 2024? Amen? After prayer, we'll move over to the um, cafeteria, and uh, we'll have a um, continental breakfast. Amen? Amen. If you're ready to go home, for all the ladies, if you're ready to go home, you've written your check, would you stand? Amen? I'm going to ask you to please, please follow an instruction of our, of our ushers. We're not just going to run on out of here. We're going to do everything in order. Even if you're not giving, I'm going to ask today that you march around. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for this powerful message that you gave Bishop Hill today, Father. Thank you for using him, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Now, God, I pray that you honor the giver right now, God. Honor the giver, God. I pray that it returns to them 100-fold, God. And I'm praying, Father, that you touch the hearts of all the people, that they be obedient and be in the house of the Lord tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. Bless us going, bless us coming. Until we meet again, everybody say, you are now dismissed. Thank you for attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. 
If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new Church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y dot org. And you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're going to have a good time.